This time on Norfolk Perspectives, the Arts Festival is having something in October that you're not going to want to miss. It's something about jazz, a 411 on swimming alerts and why we do them in Ocean View. See what all the buzz is about in the uh, Norfolk Botanical Garden. And guess what? We're talking about before and after school, which means school is around the corner. Stay tuned for some great stuff right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher, and I'm here with Rob Cross. The I don't know. You do everything. You're a drummer, but more importantly, you're the executive director of the Virginia Arts Festival. It's good to be here, Bob. Thanks. It's good to have you. It's early for me to be here. I know, because no, I'm totally messed up. You're supposed to be on hiatus, taking a break, enjoying the summer, going to New York, and you're organizing something in October. Well, this great opportunity came along for the festival in the city of Norfolk, and we couldn't say no. We've got a great jazz and gospel weekend coming up the first weekend in October and I want to give your viewers the first opportunity to hear about it. Well, I was going to say because I, I mean trying to get ready for this the only thing I could find was stuff that you guys have that you haven't released yet so this is really a first. It is. We're going to be announcing it this week so it's, we're glad to be here and talk about it. You know because most of the time I spend the time on the sofa trying to get out of you guys what you're getting ready to do so this is cool. Okay so October 4th, 5th and 6th is the weekend. That's right. Um, we're going to do a, a gospel jazz weekend and use some of the great venues in Norfolk, the Attics Theater and Chrysler Hall. Oh, wow. And uh, Wynton Marcellus, who is a great friend of the festival and obviously the greatest Hello. jazz trumpet player alive, has an amazing project that he's touring with this fall. And we got lucky that he likes Norfolk and the date worked perfectly. So he'll be down with the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra and the Obsidian Baptist Choir doing a piece that he wrote called the Obsidian Mass. And it's, it's going to be Ooh. spectacular. So we've got the full big band, 60 voice choir and Winton playing in the in the band and we'll do that on Chrysler Hall on October 5th. No wait, Winton's just going to be in the band? Yes, he's going to be in the band playing trumpet. Absolutely. Wow. And the choir's conductor will conduct the show. So it's uh, one of those great traditional gospel choirs but it will have hints of New Orleans and bebop from Winton's big band uh, roots and uh, it's, Chrysler Hall is going to rock that night. Wow. Now, how many, when, so when would tickets be going on sale? They'll go on sale night? August 7th, Wednesday, this week. So this is the this time. This is it right and now. you better get them because That's, something tells me yes. they're going to go Yeah, Winton has sold very well for us in the past, so we're excited. Okay, so jazz in the Chrysler, I mean, Chrysler Hall is kind of a big venue for that, isn't it? Yeah, it's not for this project. We're going to have close to 200 musicians on stage, so it's going to be a... Hello. Yeah, it's going to be a big, big night. Okay, let's talk on, about the, yeah, let's And the rest of the weekend, we're going to start it out on Friday night, um, October 4th, with Carla Cook, a fantastic jazz singer, with one of our f local favorites, John Toomey, the John Toomey Trio. And we'll oh, do it okay. in the Attics uh, Jazz Club. We, we take one of the small rooms in the Attics and turn it into a jazz club. And we do this every day during the festival, and all those concerts sell out. So. Okay, now wait a minute. It's not going to be in the theater? It's in the, nope, it's in the small room with the Attics, um, which is great. It seats about 110 people. So that one will definitely sell out. Yeah, because I was getting ready to talk about intimacy because I was over at, during the Arts Festival. We, we, uh, Audrey Audrey Conner. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. You know, that was intimate enough. Yes. So we'll do the Jazz Club on Friday night, Winton on Saturday night in Chrysler, and then on Sunday we'll come back to the Attics Theater in the theater part of the building. Okay. And Renee Marie, this fantastic singer with Richmond and Atlanta roots, will be with our local Roy Muth Big Band and doing some of the great big band standards, some of the Ellis stuff, um, some of the... Louis Armstrong songbook. So it's going to be a fantastic weekend. Cool. Uh, Norfolk will be the place to be that week for gospel and jazz. Well, you guys have done that to Norfolk a lot in bringing this kind of programming. How do you do it? Well, you know, Norfolk is really becoming the cultural hub of the mm -hmm. Mid-Atlantic area, and, and, you know, Hampton Roads is becoming this arts magnet. And because of the festival's track record, working with some of these great artists, when these great projects come together, we're usually given the opportunity to present. Okay, I'm going to ask you a personal question. Did you ever think you'd see the day where your phone would ring and it would be, I don't know, somebody from Ireland saying, hey, we've got an opening in the day, can we come to Norfolk? No. Like, like what oh, happened I would, last I year? I dreamt that it would happen, but I didn't know it would happen this quickly. It does, for the festival. It does, yeah. You know, one of your staff made a comment one time about having the love letters from around the world on people writing about how great their visit was in yeah. Norfolk. I mean, that really is kind of the, that's kind of the, the continuum, isn't it? Absolutely. I think the city has been so um, welcoming to the artists that come in. The festival staff works really hard to treat the artists well. So we have a reputation of 
the Virginia Arts Festival being a good place to mm -hmm. come do a concert. Okay, now here's the one. I introduce you as a drummer. Uh huh. I do that just because yeah, yeah. you can tour me. A percussionist, right? Drummer's fine. So when you sit in these three concerts, what are you going to be doing? I'll be loving it. I mean, the I most mean, enjoyable thing for me. No. No? No, because I don't do that. I mean, I'm, I'm from the orchestra world, so I can't do what those guys are doing on stage. But the most rewarding for me is to be in the hall and watch people around me enjoying these world class artists. So is it going to be a package deal? How is tickets work? Oh, you can buy. Any of the three concerts, or you can buy all three performances, and we think we'll have quite a few people coming from out of town to visit us that weekend. Okay, now this is about the time that I'm told I'm supposed to have you guys sell tickets. Yeah. So you got to be real passionate about this. Okay. How are you going to sell tickets? You're going to uh, pick up the phone. You're going to call the festival box office at 282-2822, or you come to our box office, or you come to Chrysler Hall box office. Seven venues is co-presenting these concerts with us. So it's really or go to Ticketmaster. Dot com. So it's really easy. It's very easy. Okay, I got about 30 seconds left. Okay. What's coming for the big festival? Really great stuff. And I'm going to be back here in October <laughs> after Winton's here to tell you about it. Okay. You so try, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's Carla Cook and the John Toomey Trio on October 4th, yep. 8 p.m. at the Attics, but in a small, small setting. Room. Then uh, Winton. Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra with Winton Marcellus and the Obsidian Gospel Choir All on right. Saturday night in Chrysler Hall. And then on October 6th, Renee Marie with the Roy Muth Big Band. And then on April 16th? April 16th. It's like right Next after year? Easter, I think. Okay. Rob, it's been nice talking it's good with to you. to be here. Paul. Okay. Thanks Thank a you. lot. And thanks for everything that you guys have done in the, uh, the festival to, to bring the, the energy yeah. to Norfolk. Thank you. Appreciate it. When we come back, we're going to talk about swimming. Yes, we still can. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. So we're going to go from jazz to swimming because it's the summer. And yes, uh, Dr. Demetria Lindsay, how's it going? It's going great. As of this moment, we can swim in the Ocean View beaches, right? Yes, you can. Okay. Our beaches are very safe, and uh, we hope everyone has a fun time this summer. Okay, so then why do you send your people out there to scoop up the water and tell us it might be different tomorrow? Well, we want to make sure that it is safe for people to swim. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. And, you know, we don't have problems very often. They're very infrequent, but we want to ensure that we are monitoring the beaches and that they are safe for people. Okay, so how do you guys go about doing it? You go out and, because sometimes it looks so green, sometimes it looks brown, so it's not a visual thing, right? No, it's not a visual thing. So how do you thing. do it? Okay. We uh, actually go out weekly and take samples of water along the ocean shore, public beach access areas, and we test those for evidence of fecal contamination, which can cause illness. Those See, tests only you can say that with a straight face. <laughs> okay, because that's, now how does that get in there? Well, it may get in there a number of ways, but basically directly or indirectly, we're talking about either uh, fecal contamination from humans, okay. uh, wildlife, or pets. The major cause is probably runoff. Uh, because we see it uh, a lot during, um, we see it mainly during uh, times that there may be heavy rains or something that disturbs the bottom of the, the water. So when I have uh, our stormwater people on, Flita Jackson, she's telling me scoop the poop and all this kind of stuff and to minimize the fertilizer. Please pay attention. <laughs> You're telling yeah. me it's for real. It's very important. So you go out there and test it, it comes, okay, then so it our environmental health specialist okay. actually goes out with a long rod that just has a plastic bottle on the end. Real high and tech, I see. Very, very <laughs> high tech. He, dips, he goes down about a foot into the water and collects a sample. Then we send it to the City of North, the uh, Department of Utilities. Uh, they test for our, you know, oh. our drinking water, and they also run these tests for us. Uh, and we're looking for one type of bacteria that's an indicator um, that there has been a significant amount of fecal contamination. Okay. Uh, it's a quantitative test. We're counting how many bacterial 
uh, bacteria we're seeing, which we call colony forming units. Okay, so you test it, it comes back, it's a little elevated. It's right before an absolutely gorgeous holiday weekend. Does that matter? Well, we are concerned. Uh, this is when the doctor thing comes in, but, right? But you know, the, our our first, um, you know, our first responsibility is to advise people of whether or not things are safe. So if we exceed that threshold and we think it's safe, then we want people to know that, okay. and we're going to recommend that they not swim until we can come back and say that it is safe again. Now, how do you know when it's going to be safe? Do, do you kind of wait a week, or do you come back and? If we, have, if we have a test that exceeds a safe level, then we will go back every 24 hours okay. until it's not safe again. Uh, however, it's, um, uh, it would be highly unusual. We have not had a case that I'm aware of in which um, at 24 hours and that we've gone back that it has not, again, gone down. Okay. And, of course, we notify on the beach. We, our website, we put, a, we put a, a big notice on it. Because it is important for people to know so they can enjoy their time sure, on the beach. Sure. So it is posted on both the state and the city website. And we also contact all media outlets to let them make them aware. And as they're well. pretty good about reporting it. Now yes, we're seeing this through, I mean, it, it, and I'm tuned into it because I get the email telling me, and it's usually at 4 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. My. But I get the email. <laughs> I'm tuned into it. Is it happening more than usual? No, not really. Really? It's, it's very infrequent that we'll have uh, positive results. Uh, we have had three um, circumstances that has happened this summer, um, and in each case we've issued advisories at those times. What? The last one just happened to have been not at the best time. I know. Okay, so Rob gets to talk about Wenton Mosala and gospel and jazz, and you get to talk about stuff in the water and mosquitoes. Are we spraying? Right. Well, the spraying is the last thing that we want to do, but of course we do have to do it. Uh, it's very important that we try to prevent mosquito counts from getting high if possible. So we do a lot of larviciding to try to kill mosquitoes before, you know, we have very high level, you know, numbers of swarming uh, insects. We also do surveillance. We, again, our environmental health specialists go around the community and we have traps and we test and count. And when we reach a certain level, then yes, we do spray. Okay. So again, measurement, knowledge, inform. Okay, right. one last thing, and every nine-year-old doesn't want to hear this. It is August, which means school's right around the corner, That's which right. means we want students to be ready, we want our kids to be ready, not to have to sit out waiting to get, you know, their needed exams and immunizations to get back into school. Parents don't want to have to take off work to do this, so now's the time to do it. If you have uh, children who are new to the Norfolk s school system, who are going into kindergarten or rising sixth graders, now's the time to get those immunizations and physicals. Also, certain, some kids may be in sports events that require them to have physicals as well. So that way you can have a better quality of life, so which means you've talked about three very positive topics. Yes, yes. <laughs> See, it's all a matter <laughs> of just talking about it. It's, it's all about prevention and being healthy. And, you know, our, our goal, we are your health department here in Norfolk. Our goal is to get you the right information and help you stay safe, safe and healthy. Super. Well, you might want to hang around because we do it. next segment, it's all about bumblebees and how they're even better than a sting. How's that sound? That sounds great. Okay. Thanks a lot for joining me on Norfolk Perspectives and really talking Thank about you, being prepared by being informed. Correct. And because of your measurements. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Be right back. of this daughter of a clergyman spending 11 weeks at number one on the U.S. singles charts? One in 19 million. The odds of going on to win six Grammy Awards? One in 1.4 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 110. I'm Tony Braxton, and I encourage you to learn the signs of autism at AutismSpeaks.org. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Okay, I never thought I'd be talking about bees and concern about stinging and 
birds and all that kind of stuff. But Kelly Welsh, you tend to do that to me. Norfolk Botanical <laughs> okay. Garden. How's it going? Good. good I got to ask you from the get go. Are you still excited about being at the garden? Yes, yes. I've been there um, a year and a half, I guess. And yeah. yeah. There's always something new happening there. And so. that's why you're here because there's all kinds of cool stuff going on. You Absolutely. still got the glass? We still have our um, glass exhibit. It's outdoors. It's a must see. Um, Craig Mitchell Smith, sponsored by Capital Group Companies. You definitely have to come see it. It's throughout the garden. Kids are running all over the place wet. Yeah, we still have our um, children's garden and um, the fountains and all kinds of educational programs, camp, so, so lots, lots, lots going, going on. on. Are the flowers still there? The flowers are beautiful right really? now. Yes. yes okay, really and nice. now you bring in Bill Gregory with yes. the uh, Beekeeper Guild. And it, what made me nervous, Bill, is normally when Kelly comes on with a garden, I got to do, I don't know, make flower arrangements or something like this. So. Where's the mask and the gloves and all that? We're not chasing well, bees? They're at home in the garage. We're not <laughs> going to chase bees today. We'll, we'll talk about them. You don't need a mask and a gloves when you come out to the garden to see bees. I was going to say, do you have to about getting stung on uh, August 17th? No, no. I don't think so. No. There, there are bees around. There are other stinging insects around. You run no greater risk at the beekeepers or at the uh, honey festival than you do any other time. Okay, now you yeah. just made a significant change because I want to really talk to you about bees because they're really intriguing, but y this is really a honey festival, isn't it's it? It's a honey bee festival, yes. We want to bring awareness um, to our guests, um, have fun, educational, learn about bees. I, I actually learned quite a bit last year, and um, they're so fascinating, and they produce a wonderful product. You can you know, honey and um, candles and all kinds of stuff. So, so they do a lot for the environment. Okay, now Bill, I'm going to be real candid because when I hear bee, I hear bee. And a picnic can be, I mean, a fly is a nuisance. You yes. swat them and you, but a bee shows up at a picnic, you can, he can clear a table away just like that. But that's not the same bee, right? It may be, but it's unlikely. I, there are many kinds of bees around. I've, I've heard that there are 400 or so species of bees in Virginia. Wow, so if you're going to carry a grudge against a bee, you got a lot of Absolutely. grudge care. Absolutely. But yeah. honeybees are, are certainly a large part of our uh, environment, our, our agriculture here, our food chain, and certainly the interest of the Beekeepers Guild, and, and for that one day at least, of the garden, but, but they are just one of the players. Okay, because i got to say, that wasp that shows up has no redeeming value. But there is a redeeming value with a honeybee. Absolutely. Honey, can I ask you a personal question? Yes, sir. My, my mom sat me down and talked about it. But she never really explained how the bee thing works. How, do, how does a bee get honey? Bees go to flowers. They collect okay. nectar, and they carry it back to the hive, to the colony, the hive where they live, and they exchange it from one bee to another. Enzymes are passed between the bees and into the nectar. Ultimately, one of the bees puts that nectar into a cell in the honeycomb, in the wax honeycomb that okay. the bees make, and over time that's filled up, and then the bees dehydrate it to a certain moisture level, about 18%. When they're satisfied that it's correct, they put a wax cap over it, and it's a little cell, a little container of honey, and, and from that point, they can use it by uncapping and eating it, or we can use it by taking it from them, and we extract the honey. Now, some bee, I don't know, thousands of years ago said, hey, we can make man happy by producing honey, or was the purpose, I mean, they got a good business going, <laughs> the, right? The bees do. The bees the, absolutely do. But, I, I don't think they did that with us in mind. The uh, honey, of course, is a part of their diet. They collect it, they store it so that they can live through the winter and, again, prosper next spring. And, of course, it's that beautiful balance in nature. The honeys pollinate the flowers. The flowers provide food for the bees. And... It's a wonderful works. symbiotic it's relationship. And really then Kelly is. ventures in and says, let's have a festival on the 17th from 10 to 4 at the Botanical Garden. We're yeah. going to be seeing more than just bees, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you're going to have an opportunity to see a live beehive extraction, honey extraction. We have uh, lots of vendors. We're going to have music, food, um, jewelry, candles, soap, all kinds of stuff. Jewelry? Well, not that, bo that bees have, you know, made or anything, but, you know, Inspired by bees. There you go. Okay, cool. Now I yeah. see here you've got a. That's a. The candles. We have the, honey the and candles. candles. Okay, being on a diet, do I have to avoid honey? No. Honey is a sweetener, just as sugar is a sweetener. Okay. Honey may have some properties that are even more beneficial than sugar. Honey it's is natural. Alleged to be useful to people with allergies. Um, 
some people claim it has some medicinal properties, uh, wound healing and things like that. Okay. So it, it's good for us to eat and in moderation. And it tastes great. It yeah. tastes absolutely wonderful. It does, and there will be honey there. The raw honey yeah. in particular. I, we, we, I'll make this plug right now. Know your beekeeper. Oh, really? So that you can get local honey. Yeah. You know that it's raw. You know that it's not mixed and blended and has unusual things in it. Look for the sign that says pure raw honey. Because I've heard like allerg with allergies and that, that uh, if you go with a local honey, it can help with it that. Can, yeah. I got to ask you about the face thing. Somebody just before taping said yeah. you rub it on your face. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it's, an, it's a natural, um, you know, like you mentioned, medicinal. I, I, yeah, that, that's I one might, I hadn't I heard. That was a new one. I so you come out on the 17th of August to the garden, and you can find this Saturday. kind of stuff out and verify it's a Saturday. Now, I'm going to give you the same challenge I gave Rob Cross. you got to sell tickets, right? Because it's part of the admission. It is, it is part of the admission. It's included with regular admission, so it, it's included. So it's no additional charge. Yeah, but you know what? If you show up at the gate and you buy a membership, the membership is the best deal around. It for is. Sure, for sure. It's $85, um, and that includes six family members. So, um, and you can come as many times as you want. That's for the whole entire year. And if you come that day and you don't get a membership, um, you pay for you and your family. We'll give you a refund towards the membership. And then you can bring a towel and enjoy WOW the next weekend. Yeah. Oh, Because you can there come you as often as you want. Exactly. And I'm getting exactly. the wrap up. So we're going to wrap up, but we want to see you on August 17th yep. at the Garden Variety. Absolutely. Fun. Thank, thanks a lot, and thanks for cluing in what my mom didn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> when you come back, we're going to talk about school is yeah. right around the corner. Oh, Stay tuned. foot wall into a canvas takes vision so we're getting into college i've got what it takes so do you welcome back to norfolk perspectives okay all five to twelve year olds out of the living room quit watching this show <laughs> this time is for mom and dad and grandma and grandpa to listen to i've got debbie dickerson senior recreation supervisor how's it going it's With going our great yeah. and darren ebert uh recreation parks and open space Okay, you guys break the news. School starts when? Day after Labor Day. I know. September, September 3rd. 3rd. Yeah. yeah, but in the meanwhile, we've got open pools, we've got indoor pools, outdoor pools, all kinds of stuff going on. So the summer is still here, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Interview over. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got to talk about school because now is the time to get ramped up and start preparing for it. And, and I mentioned I wanted to have the 5, the five to 12-year-olds out of the room because I want to have you guys talk directly to the guardian, the parent that's looking at, at doing this. We're not talking about babysitting service, right? No, not at all. Okay, <clears throat> talk to all. me about before and after. What, what's it all about? What's the goal of it? Well, the goal is we want to definitely enhance the, the, uh, their personal development and their health and physical education and, and social enhancement. So before school, we do a lot of uh, group games that will kind of get them ready for school. So they're kind of good and awake because we start at 6.30 in the morning. So a lot of times... Huh? Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. You want to see a five-year-old at 6.30 in the morning? Yeah, definitely. definitely. What do you do with a five-year-old at 6.30 in the morning? Well, 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 we'll play a little group game with them. A little, you know, they have different games. They like to play, like, color game and peanut butter and jelly type of game. They're basically their physical activity games that it's almost kind of tricking them into doing some morning exercise. Okay, so you're talking Aussies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're a big guy with tats, and you're going to play peanut butter and jelly with a five-year-old. Right, I do. And it looks like you enjoy it. I do, I do a lot. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> and that's what we want to have moms and dads and guardians do with their kids, is get them engaged, right? Exactly, exactly. Debbie, let me ask you a question, mm -hmm. and, I, and I apologize before I even say it, but I know you've been with the Parks Rec program for a long time because you've, you've told me that on the sofa. I have, yes. You've seen kids come and go through those doors. Things are different today, aren't they? Um, they're different, but I think uh, there's a certain core in children that stays the same. Their love of adventure, their love of physical activities. Uh, yeah, I think there's a, a solid core that stays the same. You just kind of have to plug into it. 
right? Um, I, well, I think you can blend the, you know, the core things that we all did as children um, into today's children. But then, like Darren said, there's the whole, you know, technology piece that um, I couldn't even imagine at, at my age like that. Yeah. You know? I got to tell you, my kids are in, in late 20s, early 30s now, and there were many a time I'd wish, why didn't we have the Game Boy and the video <laughs> stuff? But what do you do with a kid that shows up at the rec center and he's got that and that's all he wants to do? Well, first thing we do is we take it from them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, so five-year-old, no video game, no iPad, and you're going to play peanut butter and jelly. Right. No wonder you're a big dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we take that. We do have, uh, we have video games at the center, and uh, we try to do a lot more physical fitness type of stuff to get them more engaged because, you know, there's like an obesity epidemic. So we don't want them just to, you know, sit around and just play video games and stuff like that. But they so. would be quieter. Well, yeah, technically they would. They would be quieter. But I mean, we have, we all have fun with them. And if yeah. as long as it's, as long as they're structured and they know, you know, what they're doing and what the game is going to be, then we don't have any problem with them being too loud. Except for, uh, well, no, I wouldn't even say except for, but it'll be they'll be loud, but it's in a fun way. So it's not like an annoying, screaming loud or anything like that. Right. I was over at Crossroads one day after school last year. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was loud, and it looked kind of chaotic. <laughs> but is it kind of orchestrated chaos? Yeah, it's organized confusion, maybe. Organ really? Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> so is there a difference in the programming between the morning and the afternoon, then? There is. Okay. There, um, <clears throat> in the morning, well, first, we don't have as much time in the morning, because, you know, even though we start at 6.30 in the morning, most of the children are getting there around, like, 7.30 yeah. or, or so. And every parent will tell you it takes... Longer to get things done in the morning exactly. than it does in the afternoon. Exactly. Yeah, but that's in, a given. Exactly. <laughs> and in the um, but in the afternoon, that's when we have all of the kids, and they're coming. They're coming from school, and uh, we have them around the, whatever the elementary school gets out, whatever time they get out till six o'clock, and um, so we have a, a larger group of kids. So that's when we try to do a whole lot more other activities, uh, the arts and crafts piece, and the nutrition piece, and the um, homework help. We do uh, homework help with the children with oh, our okay. staff. And, uh, and also we have sometimes we, with the homework cup, we'll have volunteers from the local colleges and university like Norfolk State University cool. or Old Dominion. Yeah, so we do that also. Now, this has to cost a fortune. No. No? No, it's the, it's the best deal I've ever seen. Uh, for you can go to you can register your child for half a day, either afternoon or morning, okay. and it's $20, or you can register them a week or you can register them for both, and it's $30 a week. Holy moly. <laughs> so which tells me, and is it a limited number? Um, yes, most so of our sites take 75 kids. So you'll be doing uh, sign-ups uh, coming right around the corner, right? Yeah. August 17th. <laughs> okay, so start. That's, that's the time to line up and get ready to do it, right? Yes, you have to go to the, to the actual site that your child will be registered at. And so, for instance, at Crossroads, um, if you go to Crossroads School, you can participate in the daycare at Crossroads. You can't if you're... Gotcha. Right. Okay. So August 17th, go to Norfolk.gov to find out more information about it. Yes. But I think the bottom line, what I heard, is get your kid engaged, either before and after, but also when they get home. Definitely. Right. Thanks a lot. You are a big dude. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us, and we want to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV48, on TV but more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood. Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you and you and you. Thanks a lot.